Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and a very warm welcome if you're new to the channel. Um, so today I'd like to do the first in a series of videos focusing on the software that I use. Um, over the last few years I've done uh, quite a few videos that have really been focused on me looking at these screens here in front of me and a number of questions have come up about what is that software, what's this software, how do you do this, how do you do that. So I thought it would be a good opportunity seeing as uh, today is not very sunny outside and we are currently in lockdown here in the UK with coronavirus. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to shut myself away in the shack and do a, a, a series, maybe five, um, a very, very short, maybe five minute videos. Here we go. Okay, so the first bit of software that I'd like to introduce you to is this. This is Power SDR. Um, this is a software that's made by an amateur called Darren, um, KE9NS, and I'll put a link up to his website here because he's got an amazing amount of information on there with regards to what you can do, um, how it works, all the technical blurb. Today is not meant to be an instructional video on how to use Power SDR. Today is a taster video to hopefully get you a little bit excited and maybe get you looking at the Flex as a, an option for your next radio. Some people are scared of using SDRs um, because it's not the traditional approach of a radio with knobs and buttons and dials, which I like. However, I love this. So anyway, let me just give you a bit of a taster, okay? So everything that I'm looking at here, you've seen a picture of my shack, and everything that I'm looking at is on my computer screen. So um, I'm going to use my mouse just to navigate around. Now, in terms of changing frequency, all I'm going to do is I'm moving my mouse wheel. Okay, so you can see it here. And as I move it down, the VFO moves. As I move it up, the VFO moves. Okay, exactly the same as moving the the um, the encoder on front of your radio. Equally, I can click and change the, the crosshair so you can see it's no longer a cross, it's a pointer. And I can drag the whole of the band up and down to wherever I want it. So there's a signal uh, there, for instance. So I'll drag it to there and let go. And the next guy, the next time he transmits, I'll be roughly on his frequency. And then I can just knock it down a little bit. That's how easy it is. Um, frequencies are displayed up here. You've got so many options in terms of changing things, setting different colors. Uh, let's say, for instance, the meters, as you can see, the meter here is an analog style. We can change that to a different particular style that you might like. Um, different colors. Um, for instance, let's have a think, how do we do this? Okay, so your, um, your pan adapter here, if we want to change that to be a different color, let's say we want to change it to be um, purple, okay? There you go, it's purple. Change it to a different color, uh, orange. There you go, it's orange. So there's all sorts of different things that you can do to set this up to show the information in the way that you want it. But, in essence, this is nothing more than a radio. So, for instance, this particular radio has got two antenna sockets on the back, one of which connects to my cobweb for 20 through 10 metres, and the other one connects to my loaded dipole for 40 and 80 metres. So, we've got um, a drop-down box there that talks about uh, which particular bands are serviced by which particular antennas. So we've also got an additional antenna socket, which can be a receive only socket. So we can set those up as we want. We've also got an ATU. So for instance, whenever I change band, the, the flex will automatically check that it's still perfectly tuned. If not, it will retune, okay? Um, so what else can I show you? Meters, we can change the meters to give us different information. At the moment, this is set to a forward power meter. So whenever I key up and transmit, it will actually tell me how much power I'm putting forward. On this one here, I've got this one set up completely different. This is called a combo meter, and I've got this to show me four different things. Power, 
SWR, ALC and microphone level. So it gives me an idea of not only, um, you know, am I uh, within the SWR range, what sort of power I'm up around. It also tells me if I'm clipping in any way on my audio. Um, we've got this box here which talks about band stacks um, and also it talks about tuning steps. For instance, if I move my mouse wheel up here in this VFO, you'll notice that at the moment it's set to 100 hertz. If I move it, it will step down 100 hertz at a time. If I change that, let's say for instance to be 1 kilohertz, it will step down 1k at a time. Okay. Equally, we can put our mouse up here and we can just knock it down in whatever permutation we want, depending on the column that we're actually selected on. Okay, as you can see there. Um, and we can also equally dial in our own frequency. Uh, there you go, using the keyboard. Uh, what else to show you? Okay, over here, for instance, we've got um, the button for the ATU, the button for tuning. So where are we? 14200, doesn't look like there's anybody on there. Uh, let's just change the display. So we've got a bigger um, waterfall. Um, down here, we've got a drop down where we can actually change the, the view and the amount of screen that's actually occupied by the waterfall. And you'll see on this particular one, it's actually changed to the world map as well. Um, so it doesn't look like there's anybody there actually. Um, let's just uh, let's just check the tune. So if I click here tune, you'll see that we're actually going forwards with power. The tune here that you'll see is set to ten percent. So ten percent of our available power is going to be used to tune. So let's just see what happens. Okay, up here, this is the SWR. You'll see it's about one point five, and you'll see that the ATU is on. If we turn the ATU off to put it in bypass, press tune, the SWR is about 1.7 to 1. Okay, so it's not bad, it's a cobweb, it should be resonant. Um, but I always like, like to use the ATU, uh, leave it on, you know. Um, you've got the ability to mute audio, uh, mute it only through the speakers, mute it through the headset, both, either. Yeah. I've got a pair of Bose uh, companion free speakers plugged into this, which gives amazing audio. And I also sometimes use, depending on what mood I'm in, a high uh, headset. The microphone I use is a Yaesu MD100, which is a desk mic, but I've got mine on a, on a boom. Um, what you'll also see on here as well is, let me just change this waterfall slightly, just to give you a bigger view. On the world map, um, it will also put spots in here. So if you've got the spotting engine turned on, it will actually come up on here with all the various different stations and where they are, what frequencies and whatever. And you'll see also we've got the International Space Station, which is down there. And we've got the sun and the sun factor index and the moon and the elevation and the beam if you're going to be doing an EME. Um, obviously, as the uh, ISS moves, it will project the track. As you can see, the track is going up here at the moment. And there's the end of the track there, which means it will probably pass over the UK in the next, next half an hour or so. Um, what else? Power, volume, um, drive levels, automatic gain control, squelch. Um, as I say, antennas are, to a large extent, uh, taken care of automatically. We can record a, a CQ message, for instance, and have it keep um, playing that CQ message so many times uh, every minute. Um, we've got the ability down here to take care of offsets, um, clarifier control, RIT, XIT, and also audio controls going in and out of the PC. Down here, we've got a brilliant um, setup in terms of notch filters, noise blankers, um, automatic noise filters, uh, spur reduction, that kind of thing. Uh, I'll just show you this very, very quickly because I think this is super sexy. Um, let's just zoom in a little bit and I'll show you this. So I've just clicked on the uh, the TNF, the, um, noise, the um, uh, notch filter, and we can move that around. So if we wanted to get rid of that particular um, issue there, we can just park our notch filter over the top of it and we can actually have that as a tracking notch filter as well. So let's park our tracking notch filter over that one. 
and then we can actually move um, frequency, but the notch filter actually stays over that particular issue. I think that is just so good. Um, the way that the spectrum uh, and the um, the scope is displayed, we can alter that. Here we, we're just using averaging. This is the raw data. Uh, diff two different types of average and also a way of showing just the peaks so it's a lot lot slower um, various different options in terms of what we're actually going to be displaying but I think the, the most useful one is um, the pan adapters okay and then coming across here audio settings depending on um, excuse me depending on what we're going to be doing for instance, if we're going to be using um, a profile for DX, it might change the compression and the um, the various different para parametric settings on the uh, equalizer, which is here. Uh, we've got uh, various different graphic equalizers that we can actually use to make our audio more punchy and get through pileups. Uh, maybe if we're using FT8, we want completely different settings. So that's that. Over here, we've got our bandwidth. So we can make our bandpass uh, wider or smaller. You'll see here this slightly grayed out area, which we can actually move. Um, we can make that wider, narrower to uh, maybe reject uh, um, noise and things like that. Um, you can see there uh, standard settings for width and again if you're using the band stacks then you can actually change the band stack settings relative to all of these things that I'm going to show you now so the width the modes okay lower sideband upper sideband if we change to 40 meters it will automatically change to lower sideband um, and on this particular radio, I've actually got a, a transverter plugged into the back. So not only can I use HF and 6, um, I can also use 2 meters because I've got a transverter plugged in. So here we are at the moment on uh, 145400. Let's just change that. And that's a repeater. Let's just change the zoom level. Okay, so we can see most of the uh, two meter band there and there's not anybody on. But that's the beauty of a flex. There we go, there's someone, I think. Yeah. Okay, uh, what else to show you? I think that's really about it, actually. Um, as I said, I didn't want this to be a super long video. Just wanted it to be a bit of a, a taster for you. If anybody would like to um, ask me any questions or um, or even, you know, if you've got any comments about the video, feel free, post the comments down below. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then why not go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you like the videos and you'd like to watch more of them, go ahead and subscribe and... Uh, there's a little bell down there that you can click and then you'll get notified. This is only number one and there'll be a few more to follow. Um, but anyway, stay safe everybody and I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye for now. Your consign Lima Bravo 7, Hotel Yankee Hotel, is that correct?